Hi, my name is Adam White, Director of Technical Marketing with Beyond Trust. This is a short form video series called Beyond Trust Snacks, where we'll go over functionality, use cases, and how they might apply in your environment. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to sales at beyondtrust.com. And thank you for your time. Hello. Today, we're going to take a look at Bastion hosts and how you can use these hosts to connect to systems on remote networks, in cloud environments, and even systems that do not have internet access themselves. We'll pull up an architecture diagram for Beyond Trust Privilege Remote Access Solution. Uh, we'll start on the left-hand side of the diagram and work our way right. So on the left-hand side, you see a technician. Uh, this is a, a technician. They can be anywhere in the world. Uh, they can leverage uh, the Beyond Trust Privileged Remote Access Access Console, either a thick client or a web-based client, to connect outbound over port 443 to the Beyond Trust appliance environment. That can be an on-premises appliance. It can be a cloud appliance. Uh, and again, it's just an outbound 443 connection. And on the right-hand side, we see a couple of different types of connections that uh, the technician is able to take advantage of, and we'll talk about how those connections work. So being that we're talking about Bastion hosts, we'll start with the most obvious um, uh, candidate there, which is the Beyond Trust Privileged Remote Access Jump Point. So the jump point is what you see in the bottom right-hand corner there, uh, kind of between the firewall and those uh, list of connectivity types or, or options that the technician would have to connect to the, that system. So that jump point is running the Beyond Trust jump point client. That client is connecting outbound over port 443 to the Beyond Trust appliance, and it's facilitating these types of connections that you see there on the right-hand side. RDP, VNC, SSH or Telnet, uh, web jump, and protocol tunneling. We'll talk a little bit more about what those kinds of connections are here in just a moment. But the thing to note about this is, you know, these devices do not have to be exposed to the internet. They're not exposed to the to the outside world. Um, the jump point is acting as a bastion host to be able to connect to these remote devices, right? So um, RDP would connect to the jump point over port 3389. You don't have to expose port 3389 to the internet. The 3389 connection is between the remote system and the jump point, and the jump point is connecting back out to the appliance over port 443. So in manufacturing uh, environments in you know corporate networks any place where you wouldn't want to expose um, you know raw kind of ports and protocols to the internet a bastion host and in this case a jump point is an excellent way of still allowing those connections allowing them securely so that you know the technician has to log in um, using multi-factor you know saml for example um, and there's role-based access where the technician is able to see specific remote systems. You can designate how those connections happen, again, over what you know, protocol or, or method that they occur over. Uh, and those sessions would be recorded on the Beyond Trust appliance. So again, the Bastion host is facilitating that connection uh, to the appliance so that the technician is able to work with these systems, um, you know, using these native protocols or uh, these types of connections. So let's take a, a little a little deeper look here at um, the ways that these connections happen and and kind of how the jump point acts as uh, a bastion host, right? So we see uh, these different connections on the right hand side: VNC, RDP, Telnet, SSH, the respective ports that those uh, would connect over to the jump point. And again, the jump point is connecting outbound uh, back out to the appliance environment on port 443. One of the notes here at the bottom is, you know, that the advantage of a jump point architecture, uh, again, you know, bastion host jump point in this case, um, one advantage is that those ports only need to be open to the jump point. So there's not a need, for example, in this type of architecture for uh, systems to be able to connect to one another over these ports that you see on the right-hand side. Um, the second you know, note there at the bottom is that you know, locking down the, this internal network traffic between systems uh, reduces that ability for someone to leapfrog between systems, right? So you give a technician the ability to connect to server one on RDP, 
that doesn't mean that you want them to be able to connect to server two on RDP and, and leapfrog throughout the network because they have connectivity to that first system. Um, that's something that you're able to lock down in beyond trust privilege remote access. And this really helps you, you know, define what systems technicians are able to access, uh, make it so that they're able to do this, you know, from anywhere in a secure manner, um, you know, keep the integrity of your network uh, secure by keeping that leapfrogging from happening, and then also having an audit trail of all of those interactions that occur. So I hope this has been helpful in uh, understanding what a Bastion host is, how Bastion hosts apply to the Beyond Trust Privilege Remote Access solution uh, through a jump point. And certainly, if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to uh, Beyond Trust Sales. Uh, check out our website, and we'll be doing more of these videos to kind of explain how some of this Beyond Trust functionality works and how you can leverage it in your environment.